Hello, people of God. This is my Jacob Sweet TV, and I'm Dupi Dupi Singer. This is episode 149, 149. You see, when you see me move my head like this or that, or I turn my head like this, you probably have been wondering, it's because I'm avoiding reflection on my glasses. I turn it like this. So when I find the perfect place where there's no reflection, that's where I... I just manage to patch myself at an angle. I hope you understand that now. Yeah, I was talking about a woman who read the Lord's Prayer beside her bed. And she did not go to the meeting of the witches. She didn't find herself there like she would ordinarily have. Day one, day two, day three, day four, she was excited. So no more punishment for her, and her son did not have to die. She was happy. About one week or two after, the witches physically, physically met her in the, on the way to the farm. They met her the, on the way to the farm and surrounded her and said to, to her, you, you owe us a human sacrifice. We've been waiting, you played us games. You said it was your, your son's friend that you wanted to bring. Then we said, if you cannot find your, your son's friend, bring your son. And we promised you were going to bring your son. And we've been waiting. And when you did not bring your son, you stopped coming to the meeting. And then you stopped coming to the meeting. We decided to come and look for you at the meeting. I mean, your house. And we couldn't find you. We could not find you. Instead, what we found was um, some kind of fire that was like around your bed. What kind of fire was that? What kind of fire was that around your bed? And we couldn't find you. We could not even touch you, even if we have found you. So the woman said to herself, Oh, so that's the Lord's prayer she was saying was already working. They can also see it. They are, they are confessing that they could not touch her. So she, she was a little bolder. And she now said, yes. Whatever you want to do for me, if you like, go ahead and do it. They said, we will catch you. We will catch you. That fire that is surrounding you, we will make sure that the fire will no more, will no more be around you. We will catch you. And when we catch you, we kill you. We will kill your son. We will kill all the people we want to kill and then they dispersed. The woman was, the next, of course, the next night, she knelt beside her bed and said the Lord's Prayer again with all her heart. Then on one Sunday morning, she came to church. You remember, she wasn't coming to church. She ran to church. She came. The church, my mother's house, our house was next door to the church. And she ran into the house, asking to see Mama. My mother was still getting ready. We told her that it was, I mean, probably told her that it wasn't a regular member of the church. And she insisted that she wanted to see Mama. Mama was saying, nobody sees me early Sunday morning. Can she wait till after service? She insisted she wanted to see Mama. So, when she came out, my mother, we sat down. She said, Mama, she was a witch. Not me. She said, Mama, she was a witch. My mother, nobody, people hardly openly confess that there are witches like that. My mother said, Huh? She now told my mother all the story of how her son was coming to the Sunday school, of how it was her son friend whose parents are coming to church that introduced church to her son and now she would have either killed the friend of her son or even her son and how the witches would have killed her and killed her son but for the fact that her son had taught them that the Sunday school teacher had taught him that if anybody will say the Lord's Prayer before he will sleep that the witches will not be able to touch such people, such a person. 
Yeah. So my mother asked her, what do you want to do now? She said, I don't want to be a witch again. I don't want to go back there because punishment is waiting for me. And that punishment can take my life. So my mother, she always knew um, the issue of a soul coming to Christ was always very key to her. Even though she would not like to go to church late, she knew that this soul had to be saved. So she prayed to the Lord Jesus Christ to her and led her to Christ. And she became an active member of the church. I told that story in the market. Don't forget that they will be working, they will be doing their work as if they were not listening. And I knew, of course, I knew inside of me that there would be many witches there in the marketplace. <laughs> I didn't know which, who, who, is, who is a witch, who was a witch and who was not a witch. And I knew I had looked for trouble. I, I, of course, I had not even started looking for trouble. You know, after I, I said that story in Yoruba, and I told the market women, I told everybody in the market, let's say the lost there, because I don't trust you. When you get home now, you say you are too tired, you will not be able to say the Lord's Prayer. Let's say the Lord's Prayer. So they said it, it was as if it was a quarter of the market people that spoke. I said, I'm not leaving this place today until everybody, I, I imagine everybody will, ask, will speak the Lord, will say the Lord's Prayer. So let's go the second time. By the third time, the whole market, the whole place was booming. Everybody said it heartily. I, was, I said, okay. So when I said the story in English, I insisted that they should say the Lord's Prayer in English. They were also slow at the first time, but by the third time, they, the whole market, I mean, everybody that could speak English was already saying the Lord's Prayer. That was when I got home that day. I said, I called my sister. I said, ah, I know I've looked for the trouble of the witches because it is a way of saving the people from their onslaught. And all that, I said, Hey, I hope they will not come for me overnight. I hope I'll wake up. It was, it was a joke because he that keepeth Israel either sleep nor slumber. And so, um, I told you that I slept well that day. I slept, slept like a baby. There was nothing that went wrong until almost two months after. Almost two months after. And, um, I wasn't even home. I was not suspecting anything. I was in my daughter's house. My daughter had gone on a journey and she had asked me to stay in the house for her. The room I was staying in was air conditioned. It was very cold. But by the time I woke up from this dream that I wanted to share with you, I was sweating like mad in that dream. I was going to Ibadan, like this Bethel that I go, I was going to Bethel and I had stopped in, at the Anopaja market to take my bus, like usual, but this was a dream. But it looked as if I got to the market at the very wrong time. They were doing um, something that looked like, they said that the people who are, who, who are selling leaves, this part of the world, we use leaves to cook moi moi, there's, there's a kind of um, delicacy we call, we call moi moi. So they say the people who are selling leaves were doing their own celebration. And or if you literally, it could also mean the people who sell a way or more. Those people who sell a way or more are the people who sell herbs. They are herbalists. And they are they are usually men in the market. So they were having a ceremony. And in, they were not they were they didn't want anybody to see them, but they knew I saw them. And it's funny, I don't know how I saw them, but just don't forget this was a dream. Everybody else was going around, but they said I saw them. Every other person had not seen them. There were two or three of us that saw them. And we, we saw them and they were not happy. They were not happy. These people who have a list and people who sell more and more leaves. They said, that woman has seen us. That woman has seen us. 
it didn't matter to me. I entered the bus and I came to Ibadan. Incidentally, the other two or three people that saw them were also traveling to Ibadan. They got to Ibadan safely in the dream. But two of those people died mysteriously. Two of the other, two of the other people died mysteriously. In the dream, they didn't get back to Lagos with me. I got back to Lagos with another person that they said saw them, a man. And we got back to the market and they were waiting for us. In the dream, they were waiting for us. As we came down, down from our bus, they said, ah, they have been waiting for us. Today they will show us the Excuse me. Now, the man and I were looking at each other. So they took us to a place. What happened next? <laughs> this is interesting. I think you have to listen to the rest, part of the rest of the story in the next episode. This is my Jacob Sweet TV and Dupi Dupi Singer. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and do all the needful. And he's Listen to the next and the next episodes so that you can get a complete picture of what happened. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye.